Cerebral MRAs in uh, diabetic nephropathy, um, uh, and thank uh, Bayer as well. Uh, I will uh, go through epidemiology, diagnosis, uh, uh, choosing some key points, the mechanism of action of phenerenone and the non cerebral MRA in use today, clinical trials and clinical guidelines, and then special issues, if I have the time, to speak about the case. Uh, fictional case. CKD, you know, lower than 60 ml per minute, GFR, oh, uh, kidney injury more than three months, uh, and 14% of all uh, uh, patients in the general population. Most frequent etiology, diabetes mellitus, diabetic nephropathy, most of the cases, and uh, followed by arterial hypertension, other risk factors, cardiovascular disease, age, and family history. The prognosis is bad. Dialysis patients in young age have 1,000 times uh, higher, 500 to 1,000 times higher mortality than general population, um, young people, and these uh, dialysis patients have the same mortality as, dial as uh, 80 years old people from the general population. This is, mm, you see? <laughs> I have uh, moved it. Um, and this is the, the case also. Um, uh, the mortality is um, uh, rising as uh, the severity of chronic kidney disease is rising. And this is the same for hospitalization and morbidity, the black uh, bars. Uh, in uh, comparison to the general population, four times more and 12 times more uh, in uh, dependence of the stadium of chronic kidney disease. Four uh, prognosis, not only GFR uh, measurement is uh, important, but also um, albuminuria. You see, we have a stadium with moderate increased albuminuria and severe increased albuminuria, and the prognosis at uh, severe albuminuria is the same as in stadium uh, stage three and four uh, uh, kidney disease uh, according to GFR. Diabetes is also a very frequent disease. We know that. Some data from a Greek epidemiological study prevalence, 12% in uh, the Emeno study from uh, Makrilakis, uh, and it's taken uh, uh, the frequency is, is uh, rising according to age. Diabetic nephropathy, if you uh, uh, see here, not diabetic nephropathy patients, uh, 57, then 43% in the Greek, uh, in another Greek epidemiological study of 1,800 patients in the hospital, uh, uh, hospital um, scene, hospital scene in diabetic chronic kidney uh, clinics. Uh, the same data from the U.S., uh, it is 40% uh, approximately diabetic nephropathy, and what's uh, so over, uh, so ever, uh, the mortality is rising uh, if you have severe renal failure with albuminuria and PERT GFR 10 times higher. What I wanted to point out here is the same data and in the U.S. that uh, the patients with uh, CKD uh, die more frequently than diabetic, uh, than uh, patients without diabetes and not kidney disease, but, but uh, they become, they, they die uh, more frequently than they land to hemodialysis treatment, both having diabetes and not having diabetes. The same data internationally, it's somehow lower diabetes because we speak of 57 countries which include not only uh, Western world, but also uh, other uh, countries with uh, uh, lower percentage of uh, adipositas, but diabetes mellitus has a 40% uh, frequency of CKD, diabetic nephropathy, and also heart failure, which is also a very um, a, a condition with very high mortality. And uh, 
Coming to the key points of the introduction, the prevalence is high of CKD and, diab and diabetes, 12 and 14 percent, 14 percent and 12 percent. Uh, in the general population, and uh, the etiology, uh, the most frequent etiology of diabetes is uh, uh, of uh, end stage renal diseases, uh, diabetic nephropathy, which is in 40% of the diabetic patients. To follow a GDMT, a D Guidelines Direct Medical Treatment, uh, a prerequisite is to diagnose early this disease and uh, find out and begin uh, the evidence-based treatment. Thus, uh, I go to diagnose, which is measurement of albuminuria in 24 hours urine, uh, but uh, better and easier in a random sample, the ratio to creatinine uh, in the urine. If you have uh, more than 300, you have severe albuminuria. If you have 30 to 300, you have uh, moderate albuminuria. For GFR, the second uh, uh, pillar of uh, diagnosis of chronic kidney disease uh, are serum creatinine. It has uh, low sensitivity. Most patients are missed uh, above 60 ml. You can use cystatin C, which has better sensitivity than creatinine. It's very cost, uh, costly. And uh, the gold standard today is uh, estimated GFR by CKD Epi. Uh, but although we have uh, uh, in uh, studies 5,000 5, people with type 2 diabetes and uh, chronic kidney disease in the US, the diagnosis was set in 12% of patients. And uh, this is much more lower in early stages of uh, diabetic nephropathy. That's why uh, screening for uh, diabetic nephropathy is included in guidelines of American Diabetes Association and KDGO, and it's very important. But uh, to end this, uh, uh, what is to all you know, nephrologists have also a key role in establishing the uh, especially uh, uh, urinary albumin to creatinine ratio as uh, a measurement and diagnostic tool for the diabetic patients, and this will um, uh, uh, make timely screening and uh, treatment better in this uh, group of patients. In the 40 years, we see patients with diabetic nephropathy have uh, a deleterious prognosis uh, without treatment at the beginning of the 80s, no specific therapy, minus uh, 10 milliliter per minute per year, the uh, development, the uh, uh, development of uh, diabetic nephropathy it has become uh, through antihypertensive treatment, glycemic control, metabolic control, and uh, uh, RAS inhibitors, and today with uh, non steroidal MRIs and SCLT2 inhibitors to uh, uh, reduction of uh, 3 uh, 0.5 to 4 ml per year. And this is combined, although it is lower than the beginning, and uh, much is done, it's combined with very high uh, incidence rate and mortality rate. You see uh, to studies done by CKD and credence for SSLT2 without uh, MRAs, without non steroidal MRAs, but the residual risk of an event, it's not comparable because the outcomes are different. We have to take every time care on the outcomes studied in every clinical trial. It's very high, 10% uh, event rate, including mortality in uh, cardiovascular mortality in three, two and a half and three years. So we have to take care in, uh, hmm, it's missing, something is missing here, it doesn't matter, uh, to the pathophysiology and the medications that could uh, act in this pathophysiological mechanism. Uh, we have seen at hemodynamics, intragromerular pressure with uh, ACE inhibitor, uh, with um, 
RAS inhibitors and SLT2 inhibitors and metabolic uh, with, with H, uh, uh, GLP-1 receptor antagonists and uh, the other drugs, metabolic uh, and glycemic control. And uh, what is missing? It's missing here, but uh, what is missing, we speak about systemic uh, action of all these drugs, is uh, the inflammation and fibrosis, the influence uh, of, uh, in inflammation and fibrosis. Many drugs are said to have this influence, but uh, uh, MR over, uh, inhibition, mineralocrylic receptor inhibition, is uh, something that is very uh, important in this uh, missing um, issue, pathogenetic uh, region. Um, but we know the positive effects uh, or the negative effects of, uh, of uh, ensuring hyperaldosteronism from heart failure, which is such a condition, from the RAIL study. Spironolactone had very uh, good effects in uh, mortality and outcome of heart failure, uh, and uh, this was uh, is, is easily explained by the effects uh, of aldosterone as a pro on pro-inflammatory cytokines, profibrotic proteins, endothelial dysfunction, which leads easily to renal inflammation and fibrosis and uh, vasoconstriction and vascular sclerosis, uh, all uh, combined with uh, pathogenesis of diabetic nephropathy. And the influence on spironolactone was shown of inhibitors of this uh, process, of this receptor, uh, was shown then. But... Uh, clinical practice shows uh, RAILS comes online and hyperkalemia uh, is uh, seen in many patients in the, uh, every hospital in the Western world where this drug was used. Uh, and this is also the case in uh, studies that followed uh, 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 Ephesus for Eplerenone. Uh, the studies showed a high uh, percentage of hyperkalemia and though reviews and only in meta-analysis were these uh, positive effects of MRAs uh, proven. This uh, led to the investigation about the drug we are speaking today, phenerenone, which was the, the end of this uh, uh, investigating pro pro procedures and uh, efforts, sorry, uh, which uh, gave uh, a drug that is different from non steroidal MRI. And the difference is it's uh, the, uh, potent, um, potent uh, um, uh, inhibitor of uh, MR uh, of mineralocorticoid receptors has a lower half-life, uh, very important, and also it's uh, lower, um, it's, um, uh, uh, it is found m less frequently in the kidney tissue than in the heart, in the rest of the body, in the uh, heart tissue. And also, uh, in contrast to spironolactone, it has no... Uh, uh, active metabolites that come after its use in the body. Uh, active metabolites, and this uh, characteristic, the first group of characteristic of phenerenone, explain probably why uh, it has a lower and more moderate, lower frequency and more moderate hyperkalemia than spironolactone and uh, than epirenone, taking always into account the pharmacokinetic characteristic. And the second, uh, what uh, characterizes phenerenone and non-steroidal uh, MRAs is that it is a, a more potent and more specific uh, inhibitor of mineralocorticoid receptors, and on the same uh, way, it uh, is a reverse uh, uh, activator that is blocking every uh, cofactor that is bound, uh, cofactor and coactivator that is bound in the MR receptor in the presence of uh, aldosterone, but also in the presence of, of steroidal uh, MRAs, which uh, activate these cofactors and coactivators and lead to uh, an expression uh, of pro-inflammatory on profibrotic genes and uh, with uh, the probable effects 
uh, that uh, were uh, anticipated and uh, Today, I hope uh, I will show th that they are also shown. Phenylalanine has a more bulk molecule, and this uh, combination of uh, MR cofactors is, does not happen. Uh, in experimental animals, uh, nisoproteinolone infused mice experimental model with cardiac fibrosis and hypertrophy. This is shown collagen, collagen content of uh, heart muscle is lower in phenylalanine uh, mice than in uh, treated mice than in Epler and all and, and, and controls. And the same is for the for marker of macrophages. They are not they're absent in cardiac muscle in uh, contrast to uh, control and uh, uh, Epler and all if uh, the mice are treated with uh, phenylalanine. Trying to explain this or to see that in another modus, in another way. Cellular cultures in the same study of uh, uh, cardiac cells showed uh, a surrogate marker of fibrosis, a molecular marker of fibrosis, TNX, was lower in uh, treatment of uh, the culture with phenylalanine uh, in contrast to every other uh, possible uh, treatment. And to explain this furthermore, uh, we, they showed that uh, these uh, cofactors of MR were uh, uh, inhibited or blocked by phenylalanine uh, in contrast to eplerenone uh, and to aldosterone, single aldosterone use. And this uh, uh, inhibition was the same as the inhibition we did, uh, the, 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 the investigators did direct through siRNA to the uh, expression of SRC. And this uh, was uh, clearly that this cofactor was uh, associated with, fibro with uh, the surrogate marker of fibrosis, although, uh, and we think with fibrosis itself. And uh, ending the, mecha the mechanism, phenylalanine is a non steroidal powerful selective MRA. It is characterized by a short half life, about two and a half or three hours, low concentration in the kidneys versus the heart uh, tissue, and uh, in uh, the hyperkalemia, which is induced by phenylalanine, is present but is moderate and less frequent. Uh, and is explained by this characteristic. It acts as an inverse agonist, blocking all the binding of active cofactors on the receptor, and this uh, characteristic inhibits, on the other side, more powerfully than other MRA steroidal uh, in this uh, context, uh, fibrosis and inflammation in kidney uh, and in heart tissue. Studies, Fidelio and Figaro, 5,000 uh, 5, 5, patients and 700 patients in uh, diabetic, nef diabetic nephropathy, uh, GFR, uh, more than 25, uh, and uh, albuminuria. Uh, it was, there were parallel studies with similar uh, and complementary studies. They studied, uh, apart from the endpoints, primary endpoints, which was uh, the primary endpoint of Fidelio was the secondary endpoint of Figaro, also the reduction or the influence of the drug to albuminuria. And uh, they found 13% for the cardiovascular outcome and 18% for the renal outcome uh, in uh, uh, the influence of uh, phenylalanine in these patients. And coming to the combination, because it was planned, the planned combination of both studies, of both studies in fidelity, that was shown that the uh, 23% uh, uh, reduction of uh, uh, the progression of CKD uh, overall and 20% uh, reduction of the risk of end-stage renal disease parallel with the reduction of the urinary uh, albumin creatinine ratio of more than 30%. Uh, and that, uh, oh, sorry, uh, led to the um, uh, indication of the drug in the European Union uh, uh, and uh, in diabetic patients with um, uh, kidney disease. And also uh, in the guidelines of the ADA and KDIGO, uh, it is a special therapy for diabetic nephropathy in uh, patients with albuminuria, uh, moderate albuminuria, more than 30 milligram 
per gram creatinine, uh, independent from other treatments uh, in this context. This was followed by other guidelines. Up till now, uh, European Society of Cardiology and Diabetes and Heart uh, Failure. Uh, and uh, I want to say about this and conclude, Firenon is a selective, non steroidal MRA that has been shown in these studies to provide cardiovascular and kidney uh, outcome benefits in patients with diabetic, uh, patients with diabetic nephropathy, reduces uh, urinary albumin by th more than 30% with uh, uh, expected cardiorenal benefits in these patients with different severity of uh, chronic kidney disease. And uh, all guidelines, most guidelines uh, recommend phenylalanine as a therapeutic option in uh, uh, diabetic nephropathy to reduce uh, uh, renal and cardiovascular outcomes independent from other treatments. And if I have the time to speak about the case and sp discuss some special issues, a patient with uh, uh, diabetes, type 2, 6 years, newly, diagno newly diagnosed CKD with uh, GFR 55, 54, and uh, urinary albumin 380 milligram per gram creatinine, serum potassium 4.3. Um, yeah. If we see, it is uh, stadium A3 from albuminuria and uh, stadium 1 to 3 A from uh, a GFR, lower than 60. And uh, it is proposed to, I uh, will see the therapy. It was, it, she was taking RASI, maximum tolerated dose, and also SGLT2, and uh, the, the hypertensive treatment having a blood pressure, uh, what was, uh, in a good level. Um, the three uh, possibilities, RAS inhibition was there, uh, SGLT2 inhibition was there to add MRA, and that was done. Uh, is it possible to do that? Have we uh, uh, something to uh, uh, prove the, the, the usefulness of uh, uh, MRA on SGLT2. Uh, there were in uh, Fide Fide Fidelity study uh, about 900 patients who received SGLT, uh, uh, non-steroidal MRA phenerenone uh, on top of SGLT2 and the other uh, treatment. And this is seen here that no influence of the presence of SGLT2 was there on the result of um, uh, the positive result of phenerenone. Uh, also, re reduce the risk of cardiovascular and renal outcomes compared with placebo, uh, independent of the presence or uh, addition, addition of SGLT2 uh, in uh, the results. This is also clear seeing the mechanism of action of MRA and non steroidal MRA, which has to do with fibrosis inflammation in, in, in the um, in the glomeruli and in the tubules, uh, which is most important for the action of MRAs uh, whatsoever, but uh, for non-steroidal, uh, especially because of the potency. Uh, it's different from SCLT2, it's different from RASI. And in experimental um, data on a mouse model, the same uh, combination therapy to make the Long story short, combination therapy, phenerenone with uh, uh, SGLT2 inhibitor, histopathological cardiac fibrosis lower, uh, the same effect, uh, single, single therapy, and uh, the combination also in the kidney fibrosis much lower, not existing uh, in comparison to the other. Uh, groups and most important uh, uh, survival was better with the combination in this mouse model. What it says, not so much. It's an indication. Studies are coming. The same study in humans is uh, following, and we will have the results 2025. Uh, and other studies, uh, others, many other studies are planned in this context. Uh, 
the prerequisite for phenylalanine treatment as every MRA, but also for phenylalanine is serum calcium and EGFR. Um, we can use the drug in this uh, patient because he has uh, potassium, calcium, potassium of uh, 4.3. And uh, in, in the fidelity, uh, uh, 13,000 uh, patients treated. There were many patients, not, uh, not uh, 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 low percentage with hyperkalemia, but there were complicated hyperkalemia, and uh, uh, hyperkalemia leading to uh, a stop of therapy was uh, 1.7, and no uh, mortality was observed. Uh, very important is that uh, uh, combination therapy with SCLT2 made this uh, frequency of hyperkalemia lower uh, in this uh, group of 800 patients, uh, both for greater than 6, 3.4 was it, in the rest of the patients, and uh, 0.9 in the other uh, group. Uh, it was comparable, somehow higher uh, with placebo and comparable with placebo in this uh, small group of 800 patients, but uh, we have, don't have to forget the results of RAILS and the hyperkalemia that ensued after publication of it. So we have to take care. What do we do? EGFR lower. Uh, if we control in, in one month, two weeks, uh, one month is according to the, to the guidelines. Uh, if the patient uh, has a decline of GFR, uh, doesn't have a decline of GFR, we go further with uh, our non doses, 10 milligram or 20 milligram as we have achieved at that uh, time point. And if uh, potassium is higher than... Uh, uh, 4.8, we maintain the dosage, and if potassium is higher than 5.5, we stop and restart after treatment of hyperkalemia. You know how we treat hyperkalemia. Very important is diet uh, and the uh, concomitant medication, and we can uh, treat uh, acute hyperkalemia also now with... Uh, uh, bowel exchanging uh, um, uh, medication, uh, potassium exchanging medication, uh, namely zirconium. Uh, but uh, if uh, we uh, have a high potassium concentration, we can stop, we must stop phenylalanine and consider restarting it. This came into the guidelines of KDGO, which is most important to make, uh, to uh, don't speak about all this. If you have a potassium 5 to 5.5, you uh, monitor again in four months and uh, uh, stay in the previous dose. If you have more than 5.5, five, you have to treat hyperkalemia, stop the drug, and recheck if you can begin it again. We have bowel potassium exchangers, uh, the old one, sodium polystyrene sulfate. Uh, it cannot be used because it has complication from the bowel. Uh, circonium, uh, partiromer, uh, it does have, uh, we cannot use it in Greece. Uh, it has uh, uh, a good uh, action on uh, hyperkalemia and circonium as well. The half-life of uh, the, 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 uh, the time of onset of uh, uh, treatment of hyperkalemia is somehow lower in circonium. That's why it is used also in acute hyperkalemia treatment cases. Uh, that's the reason. This is uh, uh, SPS, uh, sodium polystyrene. That's why it induces the complications in the bowel, and that is zirconium uh, as a in the molecular level. Four months later, the patient uh, uh, had an urinary uh, albumin uh, to creatine ratio 260, and GFR the same, almost the same for, for 50. Four. And what does it mean for and uh, 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 what does it mean for the patient? It changed uh, uh, the, the diabetic nephropathy, changed the stage, and uh, became uh, A2, and uh, didn't change to a better, uh, to a uh, most uh, pronounced uh, stage of uh, EGFR. This is uh, expected from the study results of uh, uh, 
fidelity, you see overall during the study, phenylalanine reduced uh, to a great extent albuminuria. And it is very important for prognosis, as I told you before, and all of us nephrologists, we, which must play a great role to uh, develop uh, the, a better screening for diabetic patients, the role of uh, albuminuria for prognosis here, uh, severe albuminuria, uh, uh, enhancing prognosis almost to the stadium three and four of uh, chronic kidney disease. And ending my presentation, I want to say the old guidelines recommend treatment for phenylalanine for patients with diabetic with type 2 diabetes and uh, kidney disease, chronic kidney disease, and this treatment, this recommendation is independent from the use of uh, other drugs, especially SCD2 inhibitors. Uh, the target dose is 20 milligram once daily. It's very important once daily uh, uh, for uh, pharmacokinetics. Phenylalanine induced hypercalemia, uh, high potassium is moderate, not so frequent as in uh, steroidal MRAs previously used, and uh, we must uh, follow a rigorous potassium control according to uh, our uh, previous clinical practices as nephrologists and according to the guidelines, which is uh, essential and effective to avoid hyperkalemia as well. No. And uh, chronic treatment with uh, eventually, we don't have any studies, uh, controlled studies with bulk potassium binders may uh, be helpful to really do a guideline-directed uh, medical treatment in these patients. Uh, uh, ah, that is the end of my speech. Uh, the conclusion is uh, already said. I don't need to uh, stay here for longer. If you have, uh, if you want to, um, that is. Uh, <laughs> in uh, Greek language, but if you want to say something and, uh, about this um, uh, speech and this um, uh, uh, session, you can say that now. But uh, I want you to say, please try to stay superior doctors and become superior doctors if you are not yet students in order to prevent disease, as an uh, ancient Chinese doctor said in 2600 before Christ. Thank you very much for your attention.